one person you're sharing a brand with sitting next to you, now she's gone. And this now you have to figure out. Appointed. And now, that's okay. I am the appointed vice president of the Flint City Council, someone who stepped up in leadership because you were not bold enough to take the stance because you needed somebody else to tell you whether or not you could take the position when you were offered a leadership position. So you are welcome that I constantly show you how to think for yourself. I show you how to be a lady. I show you how to be an adult. I show you how to be a leader. You are welcome. This is the last time that I will address you because I will not be accused of bullying someone whose competence is not on the same level. You're welcome. Request I'm more information. So are you saying you are a bully? Ms. Yes, Ms. 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 Carter, you're out of order. Let her speak. She lets you speak. Proceed, Councilwoman Machette. Mr. Wilson, just don't. Just stop. You're out of order. All right, that's your warning. That's fine, and you can leave. That's your second warning. Mr. Wilson, please depart. Thank you. So, once again, this, this, this proves a point, right? We've got to distract when we're losing. We've got to distract, we've got to be disruptive. When everyone else sits and they make, they make their comments, they're not interrupted, no one says anything. But the minute there are comments being made that are clear and concise and to the point and are made in an adult-like manner, we have to have childish disruptions. We have to have all uh, Mr. Wilson, you are out of order. You are asked, you are asked to leave this meeting. This is your second warning. You are being disruptive according to the city code subsection. And according to the subsection, after one warning, you will be removed and violators shall be, be removed from the meeting. And if you refuse, you shall be arrested and receive a misdemeanor. This is within the Flint City Code subsection. So Mr. Woodson, we're asking if you will stop, if you will stop, Mr. Woodson. Arthur Woodson, if you will stop talking. It's okay, I'll be that. Madam Chair moves to you as you pack up. It's not a problem, right? So, thank you. Th th thank you for its finest as we continue to get order in our chambers. So, so uh, Madam Clerk, we're going to go ahead and we're going to give her a couple of more seconds, give her like seven seconds because Mr. Wilson was interrupting the speaker, being disorderly. And, um, and yep, there we go. <laughs> Maybe he can bring it to your home because you certainly can't pick it up from his. Can I get my time? Oh yeah, yeah. So she has it on her on her timer, and so you ready? Yes. Oh, proceed. Um, as I was saying, I, I am not a bully. I'm far from a bully, which is why I don't address you because it would be nothing but bullying. It, it is. It's clear. Everyone knows and sees that you do not think for yourself, that others have to tell you what to do. You literally just sat here and said, Dennis, what do you think? Maybe we shouldn't come to these meetings anymore. I fully don't expect to see you anymore because, again, one brain in between the two of you and it's gone. Thank you, Madam Chair. All right, do we have anyone else that's left to speak? All right, seeing none, I will go ahead and utilize my time. The tapes speak for themselves. As we saw, the gentleman was escorted out the same gentleman who was threatening to beat my ass on tape. Rarely do I act out of character. Usually I, I take pride in not saying much. I sit here. I don't go back and forth. Mr. Pfeiffer, he even said that during our tenure on council, we barely had a, a few words for one another. We didn't need to speak because we were voting in tandem for what was right. Now, I don't know when the glitch in the system happened again, but unfortunately, on Wednesday, I, I, I became, I, I went out of character. And the reason why I, I did so was, and I, and I don't apologize for doing it. I apologize to the residents that it had to come to that, but I really don't apologize because women on this body should not be bullied. When I'm sitting in an elected seat and the gentleman in the eighth ward when he goes in and calls women pieces of shit, when he goes in and calls women bitches, when he goes in and tells women to shut up, when he puts his fingers in women's face, when he breaks city property, maliciously breaks city property, okay? And then, I wanna go, I mean, I can really go on, that he, he gets online to boast about um, breaking corn, 
It's a laundry list of things, but I'm going to stick to what's on this resolution. When the men in this room don't speak up, unfortunately the council president is willing to do so. And what I will not be, I will not be bullied. I will not be intimidated. So the shut up stops with me. Unfortunately, it got a little intense per se, but as I sat in my seat, Mr. Pfeiffer stood up. And then Mr. Pfeiffer, he got up, walked away, and he was saying negative things to me. In the heated moment, I sure did get up, and I said, I am not intimidated. Zero intimidation here, zero intimidation here. That's what I said. And magically, we had a brother come to intimidate me more. Telling me you stand up over my brother again because he's going to beat my ass. And so this is where we are in this body. This audience, they have gotten so comfortable being so malicious and, and, and the behavior is being supported by council people. The council people saying, let them speak. You let them talk. When we let people speak and let them talk out of order, we get chaos. So the fact that a grown man thought that he could come up here and tell a grown woman a threat, that he's going to think he's threatening me? That, that my ass is going to get beat by a grown man? Don't stand up over my brother? You're going to come and intimidate me? And then we're going to try to paint the narrative that the chair was out of line and did something wrong? That's unfortunate. But what's really unfortunate is still going back to Councilman Brothers' point, talking about the Councilman of the Fifth Ward. When his brother called you a cunt, she was in the background laughing, ha, 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 and it's all on tape. See, that's the beauty of having that thing called tape, because people can play that back. And then when we start talking about the behavior, we're not on you tonight, but please don't forget, Ms. Winfrey Carter, you were out of order that meeting yelling, obscen yelling obscenities at the chair at the president. So you must maintain order, as you said you would, on the clip that I played some months ago. It doesn't take much to have a meeting.